Simply put, walking or living by faith is obeying God's ordained plan of salvation. Acts 2.38 Living, acting, and speaking as though God's word is true right now. Many of the things that the Lord promises us in his word seems as though they are not real in our lives today. But that doesn't mean that they don't exist with God in heaven right now. And it is our trust and obedience to God's commandments that give us eternal hope in what God has promised that is to say, that which is yet unseen or unfelt by us. For eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them uh, that love him. That is to say, obey him. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. And when we live by faith, we please God so much that he sometimes, in his abundant grace and mercy, allows some of us to taste some of the promises while we are here on earth. Yet not revealing our true treasures that are stored for all of us in heaven. Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. As faithful children of God, we ought to speak, that is to say, call those things that do not yet appear on earth as though they did exist because we know that they do exist in God and that God is faithful and does not lie. All of his promises are yes in Christ Jesus, and we say amen to the glory of God, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. As obedient children of God, children of faith, full of the spirit of Christ, our purpose is to fulfill God's purpose and not our own will. We are to lose our lives that we may gain eternal life with Christ Jesus, Matthew 16, 25, Matthew 19, 29. Therefore, it is inconceivable and incompatible with God's revealed truth that we should have such power as to call things that are not as though they were when we have surrendered to the will of God, whether in prosperity or in poverty, whether in sickness or in health. We should not seek to alter the plan of God for our lives as if we were God ourselves, but we should always yield to the perfect will of the Father in Christ Jesus. We must trust God to call the shots in our lives and not we ourselves. And Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Luke twenty-two, forty-two. Finally, we should have the mind of Christ and seek not to alter but fulfill the will and plan of God, obeying God's divine commands even unto death. We should endure hardship like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all of this. 2 Timothy 2, 3-7 In closing, my friends, let us remember that faith is not wishful thinking. Faith is the total surrender, submissive obedience, and trust in God and His holy living word. It is only as we have faith that we are justified, for we are justified through faith. The Bible teaches us that we become the righteousness of God through faith by Christ Jesus. It is only through submissive obedience, trust, and surrender to God's holy commands that we gain access to Christ Jesus and inherit the promises and favor of God. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Romans 5, 1 through 5. In other words, there is a divine process that produces godly character that begins with sufferings 
at if we could always end our sufferings by calling those things that are not into existence, we wouldn't develop into who God calls us to be. The Spirit continues to teach out of 1 Peter 2 and 24 by saying, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. Jesus took our unrighteousness upon himself, and his righteousness is imputed unto us as we die to sin through repentance and obedience to God's eternal commandments. And the Spirit concludes the matter by saying, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. For by grace we have been saved through faith, and this is not our own doing. It is the gift of of God not a result of religious works so that no one may boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them Ephesians 2 8 through 10 if God prepared our way beforehand why would we want to alter God's plan by calling those things which are not into existence Therefore, no one can boast that they have authority or power to call things into existence that didn't exist before. That creative power belongs to God alone. But what we can boast about is our faith, because it is no longer we that live, but it is Christ that lives in us. The life we now live in the body, we live by faith in the Son of God, in the Spirit of Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. Galatians 2 and 20. Therefore, if we were to pray for something and call for something to manifest itself in our lives, it is not something that never existed, for all things exist in God. John 1 and 3 says, everything came into existence through him. Not one thing that exists was made without him. And in the light of these illuminating scriptures, we must then conclude that it is Christ that calls things into existence and not we ourselves. It is the Spirit of Christ who gives life to the dead and calls things into existence that do not exist. Romans 4 and 17. To God be all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. For it is God through Christ Jesus that calls things that are not as though they were. Amen and amen. Come join us on the O.W. Prince Ministries on WordPress.com for straight talk and uncompromising truth. Become an email member today and rediscover biblical Christianity. Keep looking up.